I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. All right, we're back. We're back in Nebraska. We got Creighton today. Hey, yesterday your brother, your brother had a pretty good day. He killed two. We got nine in the truck. Think you can beat him? I think you're, ooh, that's confidence. I like yeah, that. I like, I like that. that too. Same general type of area. We've got a little bit different wind direction today. It's going to be a little bit warmer, but we're going to use kind of some of the same early season tactics. You know, lots of prey distress. You know, we're hoping the pups are scattering out. So the coyote densities are as high as they're going to be all year is right now. So, you know, if you're hoping for a, a great coyote day, October, November, you know, usually when you're going to get it done. So we're going to slip in here. I've made this stand a lot. It's a great first stand of the morning. The sun's going to be coming up behind us. The wind will be right in our face. Tuck down in some yuccas. Let that call blare across that pasture. And Let's do it. Get us a double. So the second day we got Creighton along. Jeff's oldest boy. Um, he's 13. Uh, you know, he's pretty laid back. He's calm natured. The great thing I like about taking Creighton now is, is he's, he's a real analytical kid. And he's getting to the point now where he's really wanting to learn how to hunt coyotes. And it's exciting for me to be able to teach him, um, you know, everything I've learned over the last 25 years. First stand of the morning. I'm kind of on the downwind side. Jeff and Creighton are over to my right about 50 yards. Calls right out here in front, probably 50 yards. So we get into that first stand, I can tell Creighton, you know, he's pumped up, he's ready. Obviously, you know, we hunted, his brother hunted the day before and uh, there's a little competition going. So he's hoping to kill maybe more than two coyotes. So he was pumped up and ready to go. And right off the shoot, maybe three minutes in, we get this coyote come from straight out. We're coming straight out, straight out from the call. About 300 out, coming right at the call. Coming right at the call. Look at the green trees right there, he's popped up in the sun, see him? See him. Coming down the hill right there, right out in front, 300 yards, just went in the bottom. He'll be popping up. There, see him? This coyote's gonna give us just a perfect shot. You just gotta be patient on it now. Out. And, and right when he turned broadside, I wasn't doing a good enough job talking Creighton through it. Um, and, and Creighton panicked like a lot of guys do, thinking that coyote's going to turn around and run off. And Creighton fired off a shot, you know, a little prematurely, and he missed the coyote, and the coyote runs off. So after, after Creighton misses the shot, we get to scanning out there, and we spot this other coyote maybe 500, 600 yards out. And, and I'm flipping through sounds trying to coax this coyote to come in, but uh, uh, I'm assuming it was a pup coyote because pretty soon he starts flushing up grouse. And it was kind of fun to sit there and watch this coyote kind of stalk these grouse, almost like a bird dog and things like that. You know, we ultimately didn't kill the coyote. Um, we didn't get the coyote to come to the call, but it was really cool kind of watching that coyote, uh, you know, mess with those grouse. And, and you could tell that he was young and, and didn't know what he was doing. So after that stand, obviously I have a little talk with Creighton. We have a little talk about patience and, and reading coyotes and knowing when to shoot things like that. We get into the next stand. I'm thinking they're just like it's a rabbit. I'm just gonna go with some TNT cottontail here. Got a little bit of wind in her face. It's a little tough stand. We don't have a whole lot of visibility here. If they come running hard into this call, it's gonna be tough to get them killed here. So we'll hope for a little slow moving coyote here.
Okay, Creighton, when he disappears in the bottom here, go ahead and get moved to the right here. We'll let him come right up through the fence here. Get right up on the, there you go, Creighton. So, there he comes. Some we'll come right up through the fence, okay? Nobody move. I'll stop him for you, Creighton. Are right, you ready? Nobody move. Nobody move. Ready, Creighton? Keep killing, Creighton. Double tapped him, nice shot. Oh, that felt good, dude. I got the <laughs> first one's always the worst, Dad. Is that him? Hey, now that was great patience, Creighton. Great oh, patience. God. All right, good job. <laughs> Look like a little pup coyote, but that was just great patience. The wind's good, the wind's coming across like this. No, you and Rick both double tapped him when he stopped right there. <laughs> in about seven minutes, I was I had played uh, TNT Cottontail for about the first four and a half minutes. Coyote may have been coming, I don't know, but I switched over to Sig Kick and Ass 3. And that was just a couple, maybe a minute and a half in. I spotted this coyote coming off this side hill here. Kind of on the downwind half of the stand. But nonetheless, that's the perfect speed right there to have coyotes come in. Because you know... You know you're gonna get him to stop at any minute you bark at him, or, or I stopped him with a the call there a little bit. I'm gonna call for maybe one more minute, and then we're gonna get going. Looked like a pup to me. Came in perfect. Creighton was real patient and waited till Jeff got him stopped when he run through back through the fence out of there. So that was he. He did good. Double tap. I didn't shoot. <laughs> I didn't shoot. You know, when it comes to taking kids out hunting, October is really a great time. Um, you know, the coyote densities are high. You're going to have lots of opportunities. A lot of times these pup coyotes aren't going to spook out as fast as maybe older coyotes, so it's going to give you a little more time. I mean, that's what you expect when you have kids out hunting is you're going to need a little more time to get on coyotes. They're not going to be as quick as you and I getting on and, and making the shots. You're going to want to try to get the coyotes as close as possible. Um, you know, in early season coyote hunting, uh, really affords you a lot of those opportunities. Right in front, right over the top of the call, 200 yards, coming right in, he's right in the bottom. He's coming hard. He's coming hard. Holy cow. Boy, that coyote pegged us hard, man. <laughs> Where, where'd he come from? Oh, man. That's why I guess. Another one, same area, same spot. Coming? Nope, he's standing looking right at it. We're on top of it. Two of them. Okay. Turn a fight on. Yeah, just a minute here. I've got to get it. Yeah. Get him up here, Jeff. Hurry up, hurry up. Here you come, right at the bottom. Creighton, you shoot the first one. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Too late, too late. Slam it, slam it, slam it, slam it. Shoot that lead one right there. Woo! Woo! Let him stop. Woo! 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 Back one, back one.
Here he's coming back. He's coming back. No, stop. He's gonna circle to the right a little bit here. There he is. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Well, I, Dude, I, was I think we got a triple. <laughs> god. The shooting was not great. I can't believe that other ones came in with all that 15 shots over there. We're tucked in pretty good right here, but I think they just had a skyline sauce. I don't. Right here, right here, right here. Go. Right here, right here, right here. Woo! 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 He's dead, he's dead, heart shot. <laughs> Holy crap, he's dead. <laughs> They're just piling off the top, coming in. <laughs> and that's the reason, you know, I usually keep the call running. I don't ever try to shut it off when we're shooting at coyotes. I think sometimes, especially shooting suppressed, that these coyotes, they just, you get a, a sh few shots ringing out, but the pup stress or coyote fights or something still going. I just think they just, they don't under, they don't know what it is and it doesn't bother them. All I can say about that stand is Jeff can shoot a running coyote better than anybody I know, hands down. He, there, he's like, as far as shooting running coyotes, the guy can shoot running coyotes at 350 yards away going sideways. I don't know how. Only a couple shots sometimes, sometimes eight or 10. I don't care. He gets them, he gets them killed. So he's, as far as shooting running coyotes, Jeff's like Maverick in a top gun. We're just driving into this new ranch. Uh, we saw a coyote down here in the bottom. He didn't see the vehicle, so we backed out a little bit. We're just kind of making an impromptu little stand here. He kind of was trotting down in this bottom. I don't know, by the time we get in here and get set up, he may be too far gone, but we're gonna give it a quick shot because he had no clue we were here. If he hears the call, I think we'll get him. There he is up on the dam. He's on the dam. Yeah. See him right up on the dam? On the dam. There he comes. Wind's good. Wind's blowing basically for me past Rick, so. We don't have a whole lot of cover on this stand. That's why I placed the call about 90 yards clear up on that side hill. Hopefully that coyote will stay focused up on it, not over here on us. He's right left of the call. Left of the call. Woo! Woo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cheers! Heck yeah. Bravo. Bravo. Mission accomplished. I actually got a little nerved up. <laughs> Mission accomplished. That, you know, it doesn't always work. Um, Usually within a minute or two, you'll know if they're coming or not when you sneak in like that. Sure enough, about a minute minute in, he popped up on the, the dam up there, just trotted right in. Worked out perfect. He had no clue we were over here. The power of a good remote, being able to get that call way up wind, way up on that side hill, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted that coyote's attention way up there, not over on us. As you look, there's just not a whole lot of, whole lot of cover. We're just sitting in this bare grass. Um, so that was pretty awesome. No, that's pretty cool being able to see him stalk that call from that angle it was wild i was like i gotta shoot him now before he bolts at it and runs off and then <laughs> jeff's the one that gets them <laughs> yeah did you see him stalking the call yeah like, that was pretty cool low. yeah that was nice pretty cool one. man yeah. that worked out awesome the... thanks for giving me a freebie <laughs> the older one or a pup that looks like pup teeth pup? but he's yeah. a big sucker yeah, he's a big one isn't he i felt good for rick you know, he he was feeling bad after that quad, you know, not really getting in on the action. So um, that was a great one uh, for Rick to end his trip on. We, we make a run about 30 minutes to drop Rick off at his truck. We get back to the ranch. Now it's just Creighton and I shooting. Wind's howling now. So we decide I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some of these stands on these rim can, canyon edges and uh, see if we can't catch one of these coyotes bedded up there. Well, we got done dropping Rick off. He had to head back to Kansas a little early. That's business stuff come up. So Creighton and I have about Four hours left to hunt here. 
We're gonna try to come up top here, make a few stands. We had some luck calling in that quad off these canyon rims. So we're actually got the wind right on this setup. We're calling from the top side instead of the bottom. Wind's kind of right in our face. I'm just gonna rip some TNT cottontail here. These canyon rims are all probably four, five, six hundred yards away. So hopefully we catch the attention of something. Get us a mid-afternoon coyote here. fence to you. Right when he gets right down here, about 150 yards, he can come right up the fence. Just gonna be no hurry. Just a minute here. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. that coyote picked us out or what up here? 300 yards. Let's call for just a little bit more here. Yeah, unfortunately creating that short is just not quite made for, just the muzzle velocity is not quite there at 300. It's just a guess. Once again, I'm utilizing the electronic call and the remote. You know, being able to get that call and being able to place that call wherever I want is such a huge benefit. I can funnel coyotes into shooting lanes. I can keep the coyotes attention away from all of us sitting up on what I call the sideline. It's a little unique setup right here. Kind of thinking outside of the box a little bit. We're hoping there's a coyote laid up in one of these rims of this big canyon system right here. Wind's kind of blowing in our face. I set the or volt probably 80 yards off to the left. The goal is as the coyotes come up out of there, they're gonna be running straight for the call. They're not even gonna look over here to the left at us. That way we can get some great shooting, hopefully right up here on this flat. I'm gonna start off with some lucky pecker. Just let it rip through there. The wind's blowing about 15, 20. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna max it out at 32 and see what we can get. Ready, Creighton? On the knob. There he is, he's just looking at the call, nobody move. Switch to a little baby cocktail to my eyes. See if we can sucker him out of the trees a little bit. Coming to the call now, Craig. Get ready. Oh, yeah. Either the same one or a different one. Let him keep coming. He's coming slow. 
but he's gonna come right up here and create me. Steady on it, Creighton? Yeah. Just give him a second on this rabbit. If he don't come on the rabbit, hold steady, you shoot him right in the shoulder. Wait till this wind dies, get ready. You can go ahead and kill him, he ain't coming. But give him enough time. He's only about 150 yards. Take your time. Shoot him when you're steady, lock it down, no hurry. No hurry. Nice. Good shot, dude. Great shot. Oh. Nice shot, man. Just a little persistence there. A coyote wasn't not every coyote, so unfortunately he's not gonna come running right after the call. That's a win right there to get that coyote to come back. It was just real spooky. Could be because of the wind. Could be because it's just a young coyote. But either way, we mixed up the sounds. Probably played another four or five different sounds before we got him to pop back out, and that's all it took. We're gonna sit here for about two more minutes. I'm gonna blare some puppy. Oh, no, you had too much time to think about it, huh? There's one right here, Sean. Coming, coming right here down the cow trail. See his head up there? down that hill a little bit. I'm gonna stop him on that cow trail. All I have is a headshot. I might try it here if I can't get him to come out. I'm trying to figure out the wind he left. the wind. <laughs> nice. Had a baby. Doubled up. <laughs> Doubled up. Well, these coyotes over here just a little more cautious. I don't know. We're a little closer to the rancher's house. That could be a reason. You just never know. But all it takes is getting within rifle range. We made it happen, man. <laughs> Been here 12 minutes, 12 minutes. That's probably the cleanest double we've had in a while. That's a good double there. They don't like the sound you're playing. It doesn't take them very long to decide that they don't like that sound, you know? So sitting there playing the same sound for eight, 10 minutes, you've just wasted five or six minutes, you know? Three or four minutes per sound is plenty. Like we've seen today several times, even the coyote we knew that was 600 yards out there, the minute we started that, he was within 200 yards within two minutes, you know, and he was just trotting. Obviously, the, you know, if they come harder, they're gonna be here faster, so. You know, doubling up with my boys is, is fun. I mean, we've done it. Creighton and I have probably shot, you know, three or four or five doubles together. Carver and I have shot a couple doubles together. Um, it's just fun. When, anytime you, you shoot a double with somebody, it's, it's special. It's even more special when it's with your son. So throughout a day of coyote hunting, I'm, I always have a plan in my head. And as we're making this stand, I'm always thinking about where we're gonna go next. And, and maybe even two stands down the road, I, I have a plan of, of how we're gonna attack, where we're gonna go next. And when you get into those windy situations, I try to, try to plan for the, the very last stand of the day, knowing that hopefully the wind's gonna die down. So I have a particular stand in mind that I wanna hit, but I'm waiting for that last stand of the day because it is a little bit better stand when the wind dies down just because the call is going to carry out further. So finally right at dark, the wind dies down just enough where I think, hey, let's go make this, this really good stand I've made in the past. Let's get 
get kill one at least. Let's get one. I need to beat Clover. <laughs> okay. All right, last stand. Here we go. Wind's dying down a little bit. Just gonna start off with some TNT cottontail here. It's gonna be tough to see. It's not ideal. We're looking back into the sunset. But we have the wind in our favor. You know, I could tell people never give up the wind. You can give up the sun a little bit. We're tucked in really good. We should be able to, if the coyotes commit, we should be able to get them right down here in front of us at 60 yards. straight left of us. Let him come, Creighton. Let him come. Okay, get ready. I'll stop him here. Too greedy on that one. That's all right. Let's keep calling. The coyote gets in 10 feet behind the call, wins it, spins around, takes off running. Creighton touches one off, probably a little prematurely, I thought. Um, I get on him. I get him kind of rolled up a little bit, but he's still going. Creighton's still on him. Boom, Creighton rolls him, you know, for the final touch of the day. 